whatever you would like to begin. You can begin. <laughs> For all my life, um, I had a very strong sense of justice, of fairness. And therefore, I was um, many years uh, deeply interested in how to improve governance. Governance in the world, governance in nations, governance in local situations. And uh, in that sense, I uh, have learned a few lessons on how to make some progress. And these lessons I've mainly learned in a connection with fighting corruption. Because corruption is something where many people feel this is uh, quite normal, in particular in a situation where there are no strong laws, where there are no courts, where there are no institutions to enforce honesty and integrity. In such situations, people think they have to fend for themselves and uh, they have to do what is necessary. And this is exactly the situation in the globalized economy. The globalized economy is basically um, run out of uh, control. The primacy of uh, politics over the economy has been lost. And uh, this is why we had to develop some ideas on how in this uh, situation we could convince people to fight corruption, to understand how damaging corruption is to society, to individuals, to ethics. And I feel the situation is quite similar in uh, the area of um, gender uh, equity. The question of uh, whether a society, whether a governance in a given society accepts the need to uh, give um, equal opportunities, equal rights, equal attention to women and men. And uh, therefore perhaps some of the lessons which I learned in fighting corruption are also applicable in the fight for gender equity, and gender equality. And therefore uh, perhaps here are some of the uh, lessons I learned. One lesson I learned was that the source of strength of uh, improving society, of creating um, reform for a better world, is civil society itself. It's the organized civil society in every country, in every situation. And uh, this is what we uh, use very much in connection with our fight against corruption. In other words, we empower civil society, in particular when they are organized in each country to diagnose their own problem of, uh, fire, of corruption, to uh, also see where the opportunities are for making changes, for building coalitions, powerful coalitions, perhaps with the government, with enlightened people in the government, with the private sector, because very often the private sector is at the same time the victim of corruption as they are the perpetrators of corruption. And, um, and then develop these reforms and monitor the implementation. I think the same thing should be done when it comes to the role of women. Um, it should be civil society in each culture, in each tradition, in each um, social reality, which has to discover what the unfairness is and what the impracticality is and the economic damage and the personal damage and the ethical distortion which is created if you uh, do not treat women fairly. Uh, the second point I learned when fighting corruption is that it is good to have a rather holistic approach, not to focus only on one tool, but to have a whole arsenal of different weapons dealing with corruption. So when you deal with corruption, you look at uh, how the laws are, how the courts are, the independent, uh, how the public procurement system works, are there conflict of interests, is there a disclosure requirement of uh, political office bearers, is there a possibility of protecting whistleblowers and so on. So uh, there are hundreds of different elements which in their totality make up an integrity system. And if this holistic approach, systematic approach, systemic approach, which allows us to make progress in countries 
which have corruption problems because they can see where the weaknesses and strengths of their civil society um, involvement may be. And uh, I think it's very similar when it comes to gender issues because you have to deal with education at a very early age. Uh, you have to deal with um, uh, wrong uh, values which are uh, transported by the media uh, with uh, stereotypes which are simply not suitable with uh, harmful traditions which are not really part of the culture, but rather, uh, ra rather they are protected by the people who are um, profiting from the status quo. So it is this holistic approach which is very important. And then I would say, uh, most of all, one has to um, bring together the strength of civil society, building coalitions with various partners, and uh, approach this in a patient, holistic, driving fashion, then one can create a world in which uh, women are properly recognized as much as uh, a world in which you can fight corruption and create integrity and openness and fairness and justice, uh, not only for this generation but for future generations as well. May I ask two follow-up questions? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, do you think that women have a critical role to play in ensuring transparency and, per and trying to advance good governance? Why or why not? Um, well, of course, women are very, very important in forming the consensus in society. I mean, they are driving basically the value system in a society uh, very often much more so than, than the men because uh, they have a much stronger role in the family, in educating children. Um, they very often are also the element which is much more stable and has a sort of a longer term time horizon. This is why studies in the World Bank, for instance, have shown that basically women are more honest, are less corrupt than, than men. So um, if one is smart, one builds on the strength of women, their integrity, um, in order to create a system which demands more integrity, which demands more openness and more accountability. And in that sense, uh, the role of women in fighting corruption is extremely important. It is uh, not a simplistic uh, recipe. I, mean, I remember that uh, the government of Mexico at one point replaced all uh, policemen on the street, traffic policemen, by women. And they thought from one day to the other, corruption would disappear. But this is, of course, not the case. And also, we know quite a number of examples in various countries, uh, very often when women are very powerful and are running these countries uh, since generations, that uh, corruption has been, become uh, quite rampant. So, I mean, it's not uh, a black and white game, but uh, basically the, the power, also, also the moral power, and the integrity and strength and responsibility of women is a very, very important asset in society that should be fully mobilized. And one more question. Can you think of any example, um, either where an individual or a community or a coalition came together and was able to either fight corruption or create a situation where they were advancing good governance? Um, and if you can think of an example, how did, how did they go about doing that? Or, or a failure? Just well, I mean, it's um, very hard to find an example which combines the role of women and uh, a success story in fighting corruption. I mean, it's uh, hard enough to define a good success story in fighting corruption because uh, in many countries we have made progress. Kenya, for instance, when President Kibaki was elected, we all thought this would be a model country in Africa. And yet, uh, we have seen how it turned bad again. Uh, on the other hand, um, we have a good example of uh, President uh, Johnson Sirleaf, for instance, in uh, Liberia, introducing a lot of very good reforms. And, uh, uh, and yet, um, she came under attack when, uh, uh, when for instance, uh, people complained that she was uh, promoting her son or other friends and relatives. So it is a, 
a story which, uh, which is very volatile. Um, in the case of Liberia, we are still convinced that uh, President Johnson's service will be a historical example of how you can fight corruption and turn a country that was in tremendous difficulties into a relatively democratic and prosperous country. In, uh, in other cases, uh, we have seen the opposite. One very good example of great progress is how we managed to uh, help the rich countries uh, to change their legal system in order to make it a crime when somebody, say from Germany or from France or from the UK or from Japan or from Canada, when they uh, go out and bribe decision makers in other countries. Because until 1999 this was totally legal. Uh, in fact, it was not only allowed, it was even subsidized by the generous tax writers which were possible at the time. Uh, we, I think through our campaign, we uh, helped to bring to a tipping point the efforts of a number of countries under the OECD auspices to sign a convention uh, in 1997 which entered into force in 1999, which basically introduced a very similar rule which existed in the United States since 1977, uh, the Foreign Corrupt Practice Act, which makes it illegal to bribe outside um, these countries. So in Germany right now we have about 120 very, very highly respected and powerful global companies which are being prosecuted for foreign bribery, which uh, in the past would have been praised and would have been given uh, government subsidies for their corruption in other countries. So um, this was tremendous progress uh, which happened because of this holistic approach of uh, uh, civil society, uh, because of the partnership which civil society uh, sought at the time with business. Without business the German government would never have uh, come along to sign this convention. And uh, also showing business a exit route from this corruption trap into which they had maneuvered themselves. So in a way, this is a good example where various elements which I mentioned earlier uh, came, came to uh, fruition. Um, and of course, in all of these cases, um, women have played a powerful role. My successor at Transparency International is Huguette Labelle, who is a very powerful Canadian woman who was um, carrying Transparency International to higher uh, levels of, uh, of impact. And it's very similar in EITI, the Extractive Industry Transparency Initiative, where Claire Short is my successor, and again with her energy and with her network and her intelligence and her uh, commitment, she is bringing this to sort of tremendous recognition. So uh, women are absolutely necessary um, and are very often the driving force in um, achieving these successes. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.